I'm Maya Nista, I'm the CEO of Mobilize, and I'm 27 years old. I am Decker Gongang, Vice President of Programs at Mobilize.org, and I am 29 years old. And what are you doing right now to kind of change the world? <laughs> um, uh, it's exciting. Mobilize.org right now is at a point where we are not only just evolving, but, but adding um, to what we feel is, is the kind of guiding theory of change that, that millennials, um, to improve our democracy, we have to invest in the ideas, um, solutions that come from the incredible diversity and technology access of the millennial generation. So for us, um, what we're doing to change the world is, is to bring more voices to the conversations that are changing the world. So we have the opportunity to engage millennials from across the country in substantive dialogue, um, but then action-oriented dialogue, and we're able to kind of figure out what resources they need and help them connect to those resources to make change at the local level. I think one of uh, Decker and I were talking this morning during our staff meeting, and I think we both are in agreement that we're where we are today uh, because people took chances on us. And so it's an amazing opportunity to professionally and personally spend all day and all night getting to take chances on amazing young people who have the capacity, the interest, the motivation, and the ability to change the world. And do you want to talk a little bit about um, the Democracy 2.0 summits and the Target 2020 campaign that's going on? Uh, so about um, four years ago almost, uh, Mobilize was hearing from the millennials we work with around the country that they were sick of being spoken to as if they were the future leaders versus being recognized for the capacity that they had to impact change today. And so we said, what would a movement look like if we engaged millennials in envisioning the democracy that we're going to inherit? And so we did a national survey asking what's working and what's not working within our democracy. What the unique characteristics of this generation are that would empower us to make the changes that we want to see? And um, from those those base of solutions came the action component of the summits, which are democ of the campaign, which are democracy 2.0 summits. And they're in in person convenings of everywhere from 75 to 400 young people, 525 young people actually, um, is our is our largest. And they come together to discuss an issue that they've identified as pressing or important, work collaboratively, propose solutions, and then we fund their solutions, supporting the implementation in those in their communities and and their campuses. And so to date, we've had nine summits, um, funded a total of 26 projects um, at over $150,000. And most recently, um, we've launched a Target 2020 Education Summit Series, which that can speak about. Yeah, I mean, the, the exciting thing is that Mobilize, the framework allows us to not be kind of an issue-based organization, but we have a theory of change and a model um, and a process that allows for us to really tackle the myriad of issues that are facing our generation. So for, for exciting for me is um, one of the exciting issues that we're, we're touching on is education. Um, and so Target 2020 My Education Our Future is a summit series uh, working in partnership with the Gates Foundation, the Rappaport Foundation. Um, we're allowed to, or we're able to address the community college completion crisis. Uh, with community colleges becoming more and more important as economic, as the economy goes, um, continues to struggle, um, post-secondary access and post-secondary success become more important as they are driving job growth, driving innovation, driving the recovery of our communities at the local level. Um, so we're working in partnership with these organizations, um, both partnership with locally, but also with our, our funding partners to address um, the completion crisis from the student perspective. Can we bring together young people from across the, the country? Um, in North Carolina, uh, just a month ago, and going forward in California this next year, um, to address what are the challenges that they face to completing their degrees, um, their credentials are transferring, but then also, what are the solutions that they have for those challenges? So an important component of, of our model is really embracing um, the solution aspect. So allowing young people, uh, millennials, to not only come and talk about, okay, this is what I'm facing and this is why I'm not completing, but what, what resources do you need to complete? What do those solutions look like from a number of perspectives? So um, our summit series, we hope, will allow um, our partners to see that they have a able um, and willing partners as we look to address the completion crisis and the students that are facing the issues. So they're not just people and statistics that we talk about, but that they're partners that we look towards to help us as we move towards a, a kind of a national goal, both from the president but also from our foundation foundations to address community college completion. Great, and I know you've both been in this line of work for a relatively long period of time in your still young lives, and I know Maya, you are with Mobilize pretty much from the start, and Decker, you were doing similar work with uh, Generation Engage. Um, what inspired you to get involved in youth mobilization? Was there a moment that kind of catalyzed it, or was it just a, a gradual thing? I think we're both going to be really cliche and talk about our moms. Um, 
So I am first generation American and I think the struggles and the journey that my parents went through to come here to a country um, where I could exercise democracy, the right to vote, the opportunities and obligations that um, they wanted me to have as citizens really gave me a deep appreciation for, for this process and for the voice that I had um, and, and my ability to impact change. And so I really, um, I feel really lucky to do the work that I do and I want to make sure that other young people have the ability to exercise their voice on whatever issues they're facing uh, on their campuses and their communities and their families uh, and, and in our larger world. So I think for me it was really sort of, there's a saying in Romanian that it basically says like it's written on your forehead which means like you can't see it but it's there and so that's really how I feel um, about politics and, and civic engagement in my own life. Yeah, I mean, I, I echo my, um, growing up in Charlotte, North Carolina, um, I grew up in a neighborhood that was pretty uh, kind of lower middle class. My mother was a teacher, grew up in a single parent home, and I recognized, um, I had several mentors, and I had people that exposed me to things that I normally wouldn't have exposure to, um, opportunities and resources that I wouldn't have had exposure to, and I saw the difference that it made in my life, and there was nothing different um, about my home situation or my socioeconomic setup. Um, other than the fact that there were certain inputs um, and risks that people took on me and a lot of young people don't have people to take those risks on them. Um, and in, in my um, belief about our democracy, that should not be what separates people that have and have not um, or have access and don't have access. Um, and so for me, a passion is making that the foundation, making having um, access to the, civic, um, to the civic realm, to the civic world um, a right. Um, and something that, that, that doesn't fall along socioeconomic lines. So I'm excited to do our work just because we, we seek to expand democracy um, and that democracy is not um, a right that should be increased or decreased based on what you, um, the birth lottery. Um, so for me, it's exciting just because I, I see my neighborhood every time I go home for Thanksgiving or Christmas, etc., and I see that I'm, I'm an outlier. And so I guess my work is, is really trying to make sure that, that in future generations that we don't um, don't let socioeconomics become a, a, a predictor of your level of civic engagement or your level of, of academic success or your level of health care, your level of um, uh, health, uh, et cetera. So, yeah. so it's a passion one. And, you know, this next question is kind of relevant to the coalition because we're working across traditional boundaries, bringing young leaders together. Um, maybe why don't you each talk about one way that you've had to work across a traditional boundary to get things done? I think the, I think one of the biggest boundaries that our generation is sort of pioneering ahead on is this um, digital divide and the use of technology um, as not seen as an extra but really as a core capacity in um, creating change and so it's great that we live in a world where you're not going to win a campaign by just knocking on doors right you need to have some sort of digital component because these communication tools of our generation have become so pervasive but I feel like they've been fought um, you know they've been they've been met with opposition every step of the way so it's been really exciting to see technology become this mainstream core capacity of organizing and so our generation is the first generation that's going to be always connected and the implications of that I think aren't even begun to be understood yet, haven't even begun to be understood yet. Um, but I feel like the tension between online and offline organizing has been something that we've been working on uh, that our generation in particular um, knows very well. And so I, think, so I think technology for us has enabled the um, dissolution of many barriers that previously existed. And so that's been a great thing. Um, I, th I think finding partners um Actually, I was thinking about this this weekend. Um, I think in the work that we're doing with Target 2020 um, has really uncovered opportunities for um, students and administrations and systems to partner in ways that they hadn't before. Um, I think we deal in a very adversarial um, political climate um, where, where you kind of have your, your protagonist, antagonist roles that are kind of played out like Hollywood. But um, as we're addressing community college completion, but in a larger frame, education reform, there are no enemies. Um, that there's a common goal, uh, acad academic success, just different perspectives. So for us, it's exciting because we stand kind of in the, 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 the cross-section of it all where students realize that administrations um, and systems kind of have the same goal, um, but they may have a different perspective, that they're looking at data, but they don't really know the students' stories. And, and so students are able to kind of take their stories and say to the administration, here's the data, but also here's what I'm going through. Um, so there's partnerships that are getting built um, in Charlotte, North Carolina, 
uh, we, where we just finished our summit, we see an administration reaching out to students to work together on addressing like access to financial aid counseling, where this partnership had, didn't exist before we came in. Um, now it's kind of flourishing. So for us, we, we we're excited to see where bodies are able to move and, 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 and create solutions together instead of kind of in your silos of this is a student solution and I'm not going to let the administration know about it. Can I have a partnership with the administration as the student solution grows? The other thing, and I'd be remiss if I didn't say this, the leadership of the nonprofit sector at the level at which Decker and I are in the millennial generation, it gives me a great deal of hope in terms of the diversity of experiences and talents and passions, but the field does not yet represent the people with whom we're doing this work, and so that's a barrier that I think still exists. Um, and, and hopefully inclusive dialogues like the Search for Common Ground, the work that Mobilize is doing, and our partners will help address that. Great. And what are some of the challenges you see facing, you know, the millennial generation? I know you deal with this every day, but... I don't think you have enough tape. Yeah. <laughs> what, 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 are, what are some of the, the top three challenges? What would you say? Uh, I mean, I would say Maya just kind of hinted on his access. Um, is as much as we're developing these complex ideas and solutions to, to, to some of the most pressing issues affecting not only just our generation but the world, we, we still continue to like the access to the, to the, to the, the mechanisms to make it um, scalable. Um, we're still at the kids' table. Um, so it's really getting and, and convincing our partners that, that having sustained millennial input into the solution-making process in our country um, is something that needs to be institutionalized, not happen when the election comes around or happen when um, it's popular, but something that we build into our strategies um, and going forward. Um, because right now we can't afford not to. Um, we are the generation that is the largest generation in our country's history, but we are also a generation that will be feeling almost every issue and situation dealing with our country uniquely. And so our perspective and lack of kind of capital uh, allows us to see things uh, differently and what we feel a little bit more authentically. I think, um, so I think, I mean, you know the issues, we're, the most, we're in debt, we're going to be paying our student loans back by the time we send our own kids through college, like the unemployment crisis, but I think the, the lens that I'd like to look at this from is that this generation is facing some serious obstacles, but it, our resilience and entrepreneurial spirit and collaboration um, have Decker and I convinced, and I think hopefully everybody convinced that we'll... Um, become stronger because of these struggles, create inclusive solutions that address um, the problem for everyone. And so although we're facing a number of challenges, I'd rather my generation really focus on our how well equipped we are to solve them. And so I think there's issues like access, there's issues like diversity and inclusivity that we need to address, but the fundamentals to not only create solutions, but create better solutions are there for this generation. And the last question, which is a follow-up, is what advice you have for a young person who wants to get involved in the political process or their community, youth mobilization, um, what would you tell them? Uh, yeah. Besides, you know, going to mobilize.org. Particular <laughs> <laughs> person. Um, is is get, a, get a mentor and a mentee. Um, I referenced it when we first started, but there were, we didn't just kind of like roll out of bed and say, this is what I want to do and I'm going to do it. Um, my and I have had several mentors and continue to have mentors. So having help from people um, and then really having someone you can bounce issues off of and talk to someone about, um, but then also passing it forward. So making sure that as much as you're getting that you're putting back into the system. Um, and what I found is that when you do that, you tend to have opportunities that come to you. Uh, when you increase your network, but it's an organic network, not just to be having business cards, but people that you really can share and engage with, uh, exchange with, um, then things start to happen. Yeah. I mean, I think that's really the best way to end um, the value of mentorship, the value of intergenerational partnerships and understanding, um, you know, the context in which we're organizing. Because Decker and I are able to sit here today together leading this organization only because of the fought fights that were fought before us. Um, and so having a reverence and understanding for where we came from and, and how we can move forward within that context, I think, is really important.